So a paper came out recently that looked at the impact of the Me Too movement on academia, and it actually shows that post Me Too, women's productivity fell largely due to fewer collaborations with male researchers. The paper shows that this drop is most pronounced at universities where the perceived risk of sexual harassment accusations is highest. So the actual findings comparing research before and after the movement are right here. And as you can see, after the Me Too movement, collaborations with male researchers inside the same institution fell to close to zero. The author points out that men feel like if they accidentally say the wrong thing, they could be canceled or fired. She also notes that institutions that have clear policies on sexual harassment help reduce this perceived risk. And this isn't just in academia. The paper also cites a 2018 study which showed that 60% of male managers are uncomfortable participating in common activities with women due to the same concerns. And a curious finding of the study was that men make up for the loss in this collaboration by just collaborating more with other men, whereas women don't make up for it at all. And the author concludes her findings by saying that Me Too was important for raising awareness, but it's also increasingly important for institutions to have really clear sexual harassment guidelines. There's been some backlash about Me Too and some anxiety, as you might imagine. Many, many male managers and owners um, are feeling a little bit more tentative when working with and, and managing their female workers. Listen to this. A side result, an unintended consequence of the Me Too movement has popped up. Male executives and managers, some, are now saying they are afraid to work with and mentor female colleagues in the workplace. So we're trying to find out, is it too hard to see the difference between mentoring and harassment? That's a nice attempt at gaslighting. Unfortunately for her, I think it's the people filing complaints saying someone did or said something. They never said, for no reason, which is the actual problem. Let's take a look at a prime example of a woman filing a complaint on a man because he wouldn't talk to her or give her attention. Now, here's a quick one about a gal who she, as well as her female co-workers, are having a meltdown because a guy at work isn't paying attention to them. And as I say, women, uh, they need attention and validation the same way plants need sunlight and water. And how if a guy rejects them, either rejects their advances, doesn't pay attention to them, they lose their freaking minds. Title, a colleague at work, a 27-year-old male of one year, refuses to socialize with me, a 24-year-old female, or any of the women in our office. Oh. The travesty. There are plenty of other horrible things going on in the world, but nothing is as horrible as a guy, God forbid, not paying attention to you and your friends. She says here, Hi all. I'm posting this on alternative, uh, alternative site because I know a few of my friends are following me on here, and I don't want this spilling out until I have some clear thoughts on what I want to do. Oh, you're trying to say you don't want any drama because something tells me you like drama. So early last year, our firm hired Dan, a 27-year-old male. In the first few weeks, he was really quiet and didn't talk much, and that's just how we thought he was. Every conversation with him was short and to the point and never deviated from work, aside from pleasantries, have a nice weekend, etc. About two months ago, he started becoming a bit more friendly with the guys in our office, and they would hang out every so often after work and have normal conversations. Isn't it interesting that she and her friends are really paying close attention to what this guy's doing? However, when any, whenever any of the girls in the office try to do so, he would quickly ch uh, change the conversation back to just work or not reply. Even now, after a year of Dan working with us, he straight up refuses to socialize with the girls in the office, and he's making them feel uncomfortable. You heard that right. Because our man Dan won't pay them any attention and keeps it formal when they try and talk to him. He is now a bad guy and is making them uncomfortable. It's hilarious because they are actually the ones harassing him and making him uncomfortable by trying to force him to do something he doesn't want to do just because they want him to do it. Oh, now he's the bad guy. He's making us feel uncomfortable. Maybe he's sticking to business. Maybe he's worked at a place where the girls act like it's high school and wants nothing to do with that. Or maybe he's become very RP'd, understands about MG Tau, things like that, knows the Mike Pence rule, and he's doing that for a good reason. But he's making you uncomfortable. He avoids any discussion of himself outside of work-related events and future plans and doesn't ask any of the girls either. Aware as he is, what can I only assume, pretty good friends with the guys in the office. Even on work meals out to celebrate events, he's only doing the bare minimum when it comes to conversation with the girls, where again with the guys, he talks to them like there is no problem whatsoever. I don't know if I'm overreacting. You sure about that? 
But one of the girls is considering going to HR about this because she is saying it's creating a hostile work environment. He is not obligated to be friends with you, and there is nothing hostile about his behaviors. However, there is something hostile about your behavior as you're threatening to go to HR just because you're upset that he won't give you the attention you're seeking. Dan knew to stay far away from these people, as they would do nothing but cause problems, and he was 100% correct. But what he didn't expect was that they would still make false accusations, just because they feel like what he's doing is wrong, even though it isn't in any regard. Dan treats us like he treats clients we work with, cordial and strictly about business, and it's wearing thin now. Any advice is appreciated. Okay, she asked for advice, so I'll give some advice. You and your friends need to grow the F up. You're 24 years old, so I'm assuming all the female co-workers are probably in the 20s. Your work is a place of business, to earn a paycheck, to pay for your living expenses, or to build a career, not high school but she's acting like it's high school. If this guy doesn't want to talk to you, that's his business. He probably has experience where BS goes on, gossiping and drama and turmoil, which you're creating drama, and wants nothing to do with it. And given how you're acting here and saying that it's a unpleasant work environment or some BS like that and thinking about going to HR, gee, you wonder why he doesn't want to talk to you. Problem is this, you can't handle the fact that a guy doesn't want to pay attention to you, that a guy isn't flirting with you, asking you out and all that, and it's driving you freaking crazy. Examples like this are the reason why men are avoiding women in the workplace. You can do absolutely nothing wrong at all and still get a complaint. A large percentage of male managers were concerned about working with women one-on-one -on -one in the workplace. They were concerned about mentoring women. They were saying they were afraid to have meetings with women, to travel with women, and so on. It indicates that there are anxieties and fears that we need to address. What happened to men pursuing girls? When was the pivotal moment that a man chose to not go after a girl anymore or put in any effort? It seems like guys can just put the bare minimum and not even really put an effort anymore. They don't really care to. Or they're like, why don't girls just go and make the first move and make the effort? When did it become a thing? Now it's like role reversal where they expect girls to be making the first moves, yearning for a guy and chasing him. That is, I feel like, the downfall of why it's so hard to meet someone because men don't put an effort in. There's plenty of pivotal moments. How about when a woman called a man weak for opening her car door? Or the time that men pursued women on dating apps and him saying, hey, how are you, wasn't good enough? How about the pivotal moment when a man is looking out into the open and happens to glance in a woman's direction and somehow he's undressing her with his eyes? Or how about the moment when women considered everything the bare minimum and nothing is ever good enough? Or what about the pivotal moment where men have to fix everything in a relationship to make it work and women have to simply exist? Or how about the time there was a study done that said 80% of women find men unattractive, so why would they try anymore? Or the pivotal moment where men can be accused of SA or grape at any given moment by accident just because a woman is pissed off because she was rejected? Or what about the pivotal moment that women have constantly told men that they're so undesirable that they would rather pick a bear over a human being as if men don't have feelings? Or how about the pivotal moment that every single man that ever chased a woman was considered a simp and women simply didn't respect them or want to be with them because they're chasing and they're trying too hard? What about the pivotal moment when the nice guy gets left because he's not toxic enough? Or what about the pivotal moment where men can't even simply be respectful without it being considered creepy or too friendly? Or what about the time that women decided that not even Cheesecake Factory was good enough for a first date? And that they didn't want to get to know men for who they are. They wanted to know how much money they made and their status. And I don't know about you, but that doesn't sound worth chasing. Okay, bye. If you enjoyed this video, I promise you'll enjoy this next video. I will see you there.